right, let's go. I need y'all help on this one. It's real simple. Y'all just repeat after me, okay? put anything before God. We won't put our friends before God. We won't put social media before God. We will 
will put God first. We will put him in his rightful place. And that is above all things. All right. So we're going to, y'all know um, your great name. We're going to lift that up this morning. I know y'all know this one. Hey. there but when we say the name of Jesus I don't know about y'all but when I can be sitting at home and I can be full of tears and when I say Jesus it's like a peace that comes over and if I'm worried about something all I gotta say is Jesus and there is a peace that comes so I just want to encourage you this morning that if there is anything that you're going through if you got a test that you gotta take 
if your back is against the wall because a, a friend talking about you and they said they was your friend, but they really not your friend. I dare you to call on the name of. He is a friend like no other. He is a he sticks closer than a brother. That's what the Bible says that he sticks closer than a brother. Y'all believe that? I believe that. So we're going to sing this last one, and it's called Reckless Love. One, one second. Give me one second. Do y'all, how, how many of you believe that God really loves you? There is nothing that you can do that can stop his love. And so this song in the Bible, there's a scripture called in Matthew 18, and it says that God, he can have, it's, he loves us so much. It's like he has 99 sheep. And if one is gone, guess what? You think he going to stay with the 99 or is he going to get the one? He going back to get the one. So we are never too far from God that he will not leave 99 and he will come and get us. He will come and see about us and he will bring us back into him. So there is nothing that we can do. There is nothing that we can say. There is nothing that we've done. There's nothing that we have said that will keep God from loving us. Friends turn their back. They say one thing and they, go, they do something else. But God, he promises to stay with us. He said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. So this song is called Reckless Love. And just begin to close your eyes and lift your hands and just begin to think of the God's love. We want to invite him into this place. You're never too old, young to worship him. You're never too young to lift him up. So we're going to lift up reck Reckless Love. All right. Never ending, reckless. Oh, it chases me 
no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Can y'all lift that up with me? There's no shadow you won't lie. part up it says no shadow there's no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me make it personal believe that there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't. All, all the This week, just hold on to that. Just receive his love. That you can't earn it. It's nothing that you can do to earn it. He just loves you. He created you and he called you his own. To earn it and I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away. All oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Do you believe that? Yeah. Do you believe that, that his love, it will come and chase after you no matter if you can be high, you can have your high moment, your low moment, and he will come and get you. God loves you. All right. Hallelujah. Thank you. What's up, high school? Hey, I want y'all to do me a, a, a favor. I want y'all to give a warm welcome to Generate. They are in the building, our young adults. Y'all give it up for Generate. Is trying to airdrop me something. No, I declined. I declined. All right. Since since we own that, all right. And since we own that, let me go over some housekeeping. <laughs> I was gonna do that later, but um, AirPods. Take your AirPods out, please. Uh, generate Kingdom servants, please make sure that, that they don't have their AirPods in. Take your hoodies off. Um, and then put your phones away, okay? Hey, listen up. So this past Wednesday, I told our, our, we had a small group Wednesday, and I was telling them the statistics on the use of social media, okay? And one of the statistics that I found was that the more you use social media, the more likely you are to be depressed, feel lonely, and even all the way up to, to feeling suicidal and you can research it yourself okay the more you use social media the more you're on your smartphone 
the more likely you are to feeling lonely. And if I were probably to show, uh, if I was probably, to, if we, if we expose you, it's probably some of you, you feel lonely. Check your social media use. But we talked about what, what's the solution? Not elimination, moderation. Okay? Uh, 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 just small increments of it. You don't have to get all the way off of social media, but watch your use. Okay? Talk to your family. Talk to your friends. Don't just be chilling with them and, and, you know, all on your phone and stuff like that. You're not present. Talk to them. See how they're doing. See how their family doing, okay? All right? You can look at the statistics on that. We care about you, and that's why I'm sharing that with you, okay? Uh, did you guys enjoy the tailgate, those who were there? Some breakfast tacos and smoothies. Thank you, Kingdom Servants, and everybody for being here and, and, and serving that. Um, this month has been a good month. We talked about trust, and we hope that you have learned um, to trust in the Lord and that faith is measured by your feet, not your feelings. And so you know you trust God by the way you walk, by the way you talk, by the way you live out your life. Can anybody tell me what was the key verse of this month? Three, five through six. Somebody paying attention. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Trust him. He's dependable. Okay. Uh, who went to our ladylike event? Stand up if you went to our ladylike event. Hey, only two of y'all here? <laughs> Stand up. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. You can sit down. You can sit down. You can sit down. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Miss Natalie. They had a good time. Y'all went to group dynamics, right? Hey, yeah. It went to group dynamics. A good, good fun activity. Building team and working with each other. I bet it was fun. Get active. Um, we had a good student leadership meeting today. We was talking about the Pentateuch. You know, we're learning how to read the Bible in, in observation, interpretation, application. A lot. We tell people, go read the Bible, go read the Bible. But to be honest, people don't even know how to read it. We come and we approach it and it's like it's all spiritual and stuff. And, you know, we read it like very strange sometimes. We get way too spiritual. Okay, And so we're teaching our student leaders how to read the Bible, how to understand it. You know, we, we have 66 books in the Bible and they all matter. They all matter. A lot of Christians, we just neglect a lot of the scriptures, but all of it is inspired by God and is useful for you and your life. It's relevant. It's relevant for today. OK, what else do we got? Next month is Stranger Things. That's the theme. How many of you watch Stranger Things? Raise your hand. OK, OK. Stranger things, all right? So that's that's the theme. And then the verse is Joshua 1 9. Who knows Joshua 1 9? Anybody? Your Bible do? Okay, I'm glad your Bible do know what Joshua 1 9. Be strong and be courageous. Yeah. So the key word is gonna be courage. It's gonna be courage. We're gonna be talking about courage all month. And uh we live in a scary world. It's a lot of strange things going on. Okay, we, we, there's gender confusion. We don't know if we male or female. There's a lot of confusion. It's some scary, it's some strange things going on. If you don't see that, you blind. Okay, so we're going to talk about having courage and how to live in this strange world. Um, you need to join us on Remind, too. Let me pull that up. OCBFY 281010. OK, so text at OCBFY to 81010. OK, thank you. Next week. All right. So next week, starting off is uh, bring a friend. So we want you all to invite a friend. Now, they may say no, but we want you to extend the invitation. You can't control what they say, but you can control what you say. Just say, hey, man, we got high school service. Let them know it's high school only. You know, people yeah, get high schoolers and they don't want to be in the building with middle schoolers no more. So let your friends know, let your cousins and whatever, let them know to come, bring them, um, give them a ride. Follow us on social media, Next Level Youth W3. Follow us on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, Next Level Youth 
W3. Am I missing any announcements? Yeah, we got a TikTok. Yeah, 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 we got a TikTok. Oh, thank you for reminding me. Okay, look, y'all, I was on standby. I wasn't supposed to do announcements. All right, I want us, I want Kelly, Justice, and where is Caleb? He is on the, he on the job. Y'all come up here. Y'all come up here. Y'all give them a warm welcome, okay? I want to introduce you to some people that are a part of our student leadership team. We're building a core team, right? And so Miss Kelly is our student president. Y'all give it up for Miss Kelly. Hey. And Justice and Caleb are the vice presidents. Caleb's the first vice president. Justice is the second vice president. So they're working within the core team to help build uh, a better student leadership team so that we can impact um, in whatever ways we can, okay? So thank y'all so much. Y'all congratulate them. Y'all talk to them. Yeah, 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 okay, he right there. He right there. He right there. He on the camera. Y'all say, what's up, Caleb? <laughs> All right, thank y'all so much. Let me just kick off with a word of prayer. We'll just jump right in. He just prayed, but I'm going to pray again. This is for the word. Heavenly Father, thank you. If you don't do anything else, you've already done enough by sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. Help us to be about it. You chose David at 15. You don't have to wait until we're adults. You can choose us when we're mature. So help us to continue to mature. Help us to not give way to the culture. Um and help us to go in the direction you're calling us to go because it seems to me that the, the life maker knows more about life living than we do. So it's just simple logic that you know what you've created us to do. We love you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. It was 2006. I was with the San Diego Chargers in training camp, played five years in the league. In 2006, it was San Diego. They're L.A. Chargers now, but in 2006, the San Diego Chargers, and I remember it was brutal. Okay, so football back then, they care less about your life. So there was no rules, no regulations. We practiced two, three times a day, full pads. Um, we didn't even know what day it was by day four because we thought every practice was a different day, but we had three in one day. So three days went by, and we were still stuck in the same day. You know what I mean? So we were frustrated. So it was tough. We would get up at 6 a.m. We wouldn't get back to our hotel rooms till 9 p.m. We would practice, have meetings, then breakfast, then practice, have meetings, then lunch, then practice, have meetings, then bed. And we had to do that for six weeks straight. So by day five, dudes was talking about quitting, retiring, going home, calling their moms like, get the bed ready. I'm going to be in it soon. Coach going to cut me. So I don't know how long I can be here. There was no light at the end of the tunnel, and if there was a light, it was just the light of an oncoming train because it was just rough. And I remember being there. It was day seven. I remember day seven like it was yesterday because day seven was garbage. You hear me when I tell you we practiced like garbage? Maybe not garbage. We practiced like garbage. It was terrible. It was bad. I remember going out there. Anybody know the name of Ladanian Tomlinson? Anybody football people y'all know? Maybe too young? Yeah. Well, he's one of the greatest running backs of all time. He fumbled like three times that day. We were like, yeah, something's wrong. We had another guy who likes to hit anything moving. Just, just, he, he just the hitter. He just wants to hit. He wasn't hitting anybody that day. We were like, yeah, today's a little different. Our quarterback at the time was Phillip Rivers. He was throwing interceptions that day. We said, yeah, this is a little different. Everybody was just practicing like garbage. Because we were feeling ourselves. It was hard. It's training camp. And I looked at the head coach, and I saw that he had taken notice, but he didn't say a word. He was just rubbing his chin, watching us practice like garbage. Just rubbing his chin, looking at it. We were out there just complaining, mumbling, groaning, whining, because it was rough. What we were going through was just tough. That was just the nature of what it was. 
And I remember day eight like it was yesterday because I thought we had got away with it until day eight showed up. I remember sitting in my chair, slouched, eyes halfway shut, just trying to make it. And you could hear the grumbling, groaning, and complaining going across the room. Every man in there was just like, yeah, bro, I'm not sure about this. And then the door slammed shut and everything got quiet. Because the head coach had just entered the room and we had mad respect from this dude. It goes by the name of Marty Schottenheimer. Y'all don't know him, but he's kind of a Hall of Fame type coach. And he came in front of the team and we knew this day was different because he just paced and he looked for five minutes of no talking. He just paced and he looked and he took the time to look at each individual player right between the eyes, almost as if to see what we were thinking. And I remember sitting up and leaning forward because I was curious at what he was going to say. And then finally, he began to speak. He said, I did not just cast a net in hopes that the great players that I needed to win a Super Bowl would just so happen to randomly fall into it. He said, that's not the way I work. You were hand selected, cherry picked and chosen by none other than myself. And I'm Marty Schottenheimer. I don't make mistakes with who I choose. I watched your game tape beforehand. I knew exactly what you would contribute to this team. I placed you here for nothing less than greatness and total success with the 2006 San Diego Chargers. I've given you a playbook that's been tried and tested. I know it works. It's worked over the course of my career. I've given you coaches who can teach it to you. I've given you a place where you can execute it. Most importantly, I've given you a uniform with your name on it. I've given you everything you need to achieve greatness. That's the reason why I drafted you, the reason why I traded for you, the reason why I'm paying you, the reason why I put you in this place is only for greatness, not for mediocrity, and I won't allow you to settle for it. He said, but you got to do something for me. I can call you to greatness. I can give you a book that's great. I can give you coaches that are great. I can give you a uniform that's great. But if you don't maintain the integrity of everything I'm presenting to you, you'll nullify the greatness that I chose you for. So I've given it to you, but you got to go get it in order to have the experience of it. I know it's hard. That's what training camp is. Training camp gets you ready for the season. That's just a part of what life is. I know these things aren't easy, but it gives you strength and perseverance for where you're headed and where I'm taking you. You can't be great if you're not willing to go through the hard stuff. So stop whining, grumbling, groaning, and complaining. Strap on your pads, slip on your helmet, and meet me on the 50-yard line because the time for your greatness will, in fact, start right now. I'm kind of feeling that right now. No, nobody move. I might come hit you. I can't, though. I might pull my hamstrings. So, the days are over. I remember that practice like yesterday because we had all of a sudden had the realization that we had been called to something bigger. We had smoke coming out of our ears and fire coming out of our nose. And the, the days before, we were just kind of making it through it because we had forgotten that we were selected by nothing less than greatness. In 2009, I retired from the Washington Commanders. They the Redskins when I played, but now they're the Commanders. And, yo, I was lost. Yeah, Tony Evanson and all that, forget that. I was the youngest. I had played ball my whole life, so I was like, yo, what am I going to do now? Because football was done, so I didn't know where to go, what to do. And so I kind of felt like I felt in training camp, mumbling, groaning, whining, and complaining because times were getting hard. They used to be a bit easier, but now I'm a little bit unaware of what's next in my life. And the Holy Spirit knocked on the door of my heart, and he said, hey, man, you remember that speech Marty gave you back in 2006? I said, yeah, how can I forget it? He said, haven't I said the same thing to you? He said, those that I foreknew... Romans 8, he says, those that I foreknew, I already predestined to be conformed into the image of my son. Those that I predestined, I already called. Those that I called, I already justified. Those that I justified, I already glorified. So what then can you say if God is for you, then who in the world can be against you? And at that moment, that's when I realized, oh, wait a minute, I have been called. And now my wife and my kids have been called and you have been called and your parents have been called and your future children have been called and your future grandchildren have been called to nothing less than greatness in the kingdom of God. And the last time I checked, he's God. He don't make mistakes with who he chooses. 
So if you're sitting in the seat today, it's because he's called you, selected you, created you, watched your game tape beforehand. The Bible says he knew you before he even formed you in your mother's womb. That means he knows exactly how he wants to use you on his kingdom team for his glory and your good. He doesn't make mistakes, even if you're experiencing mistakes in the making. You got to understand he already has prepared a perfect book that's been tried and tested for thousands of years. It'll work for you, and it works if you work it. He's given you coaching staff, people who understand it, who can explain it to you, express it to you, help you have a better understanding, knowledge of it. He's giving you the culture where you can go practice it. Most importantly, he's given you the blood of Jesus Christ, which is the uniform with your name on it. Everything you need in heavenly places, Ephesians 1, has already been established. But you got to do something for me. He can give you Jesus Christ. He can give you a perfect book, a perfect person. He can give you Sundays where you can come learn about it. Maybe you're in a community group where y'all talk about it. I mean, you got all of that. But if you don't walk in it, if you don't maintain the integrity of everything that you've been given, you won't experience the greatness that he's called you for. Not because he broke his promise, because God can't break his promise. Only because you didn't have the faith and integrity to receive the promise that he made. Ask the first generation of the people of Israel. I'm taking you, Moses, go get them. I'm taking them to a promised land flowing with milk and honey. How did it happen? Because he let sinners build it up for the righteous. So he's already preparing it for the people of Israel before they even ever get there. And did the first generation of the people of Israel ever get into the promised land? No, not because he didn't promise it, not because he didn't prepare it, but because they were walking as heathens on the way to it. And God said, nope, not giving it to you. You ain't trustworthy. And he just gave it to the next generation. Some of us think we're waiting on God and God is saying, "Uh, uh-uh, I'm waiting on you and I got more time than you. Trust me, you'll run out first. Next. Clock is ticking. So do you get what God has given or not? I'm going to take you back to what you've already kind of gone over this month just for a few moments. The covenant of Abraham, Genesis chapter 12, and I'm about to show you a monster blessing. Monster blessing. Genesis chapter 12, 1, 2, and 3 says, The Lord said to Abraham, Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you. Watch this, and I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to make you a great name. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless those who bless you. I'm going to curse those who curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Hey, hey, y'all didn't hear me. Abraham, I need you to leave your country, your relatives, your father's house, and go to the land which I will show you. And when you get there, I'm going to give you a great nation. That's your legacy. Don't worry about that. I'll take care of it. I'm going to give you a great name. You don't have to self-manufacture it and do a song and a dance so that people know who you are, I'm going to give it to you. And when I give it to you, it actually lasts. I'm going to bless you. There's no greater blessing than a blessing from the one who created you. I'm going to bless those who are on your side. I'm going to curse those who are not on your side. You know them haters you're tired of? Don't worry about that. If you're walking with God, he's going to part the waters for you. The ones who are supposed to be there will be there. The ones who are not supposed to be there will get kicked out because God is your fullback. If you don't know what that is, that's the blocker for the running back. He goes in there, opens the hole so the running back can get through. Intercessor, boom, everybody get out of the way. That's not on her or his side because we're going somewhere. And in you, Abraham, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Monster blessing. 
And he has a blessing for you and greatness for you. But first, before you get to all of the good stuff in the passage, the great name, the great nation, the legacy, I'm going to block for you. I'm going to open these things up. I'm going to show you all. All of that's nice. And we want the good stuff. How many of us want to be blessed? Raise your hand. You want to be blessed. If you, don't, if you ain't got your hand up, you're lying in church. Don't lie in church. And what's the blessing? A blessing is the favor of God to me, right? That's half of a definition. A blessing is the favor of God to me so that it may flow through me. God is not interested in blessing a cul-de-sac or a narcissist who just wants to use him as a step stool to take them higher. You ain't God and neither am I. He wants to use you and bless you so that through you, the nations of people can be blessed. And there's a big blessing that God wants to give, but he says, but first you got to do something. You got to walk a certain way. Abraham, go forth from your country, from your relatives, and from your father's house. Everything you're comfortable with, I actually need you to leave that behind. The way that you think about operating, I need you to leave that behind. The way that you think and how you, uh, you, your outcomes, I need you to leave that behind. What the culture has taught you, I need you to leave that behind. If you're not willing to walk the way I walk, I got a lot of blessings for you, but I need you to leave your entire comfort zone. You see, Abraham had already settled in a place called Haran, Genesis eleven thirty-one 31 and 32. It says Abraham settled in Haran, but God was taking him to Canaan. Okay? So that lets me know something. That just because Abraham was settled doesn't mean God was settled with where he had settled. That just because you're comfortable doesn't mean that God's not uncomfortable with what you're comfortable with. It lets me know that when God speaks, he unsettles those who are settled. See, most people think when God is talking, when it's that voice in your head that's telling you what you already want to do anyway, no, that's your voice. That's why it sounds like you. Because we're, 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 we're built in pride and built in a pseudo-narcissism where we're thinking about our desires, our needs, our wants, where we want to go, we're always using our voice to make God forge his signature on our desires. Yeah, God, I really want to do this. Oh, yeah, I can hear myself talking to myself. That must have been God. That's not God. It's you. Then how do you discern God's voice? Well, Abraham had already settled, and then God's voice came and said, get unsettled from the place you just settled. In other words, when God speaks, it's an unsettling voice. God is not thinking what you're thinking. The Bible says in Isaiah 55, as high as the heavens are above the earth are his ways from your ways, his thoughts from your thoughts. He's not thinking what you're thinking. He's blowing your mind from what you're thinking. He's the one checking you saying, ah, 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 you know, that's not the way. Go this way. And you'll say, man, I know I need to do it, but ah, I know I need to go to church, but ah, I know I need to be this way, operate this way. I know I don't need to go over there. I know I don't need need to be. So you're telling yourself what you should be doing, but your flesh still wants to go the opposite way. And you have this tension on the inside. That's God talking. He's pulling you away from yourself. He's pulling you away from your fleshly desires. He's pulling you away from that community you've gotten comfortable with. He's pulling you away from that way of talking you've gotten comfortable with. He's, pull, he's telling you what you should be doing, and you have this inner war on the inside, and you're doing... Aah! And you have to decide, do I stay comfortable without my blessing, or do I get uncomfortable and get what God has? You cannot have them both. You... You're going to have to, I know what I should, hard thing. Paul says in Romans 7, what I do, what I don't want to do, I end up doing, and what I know I need to do, I don't do. He has this conflict. God creates a conflict in you. Make a little statement here. If you have no conflict, if if you just can go left and you just over there just, you know what I'm saying? You just, you just hanging out. I don't know if that looked rhythmic. I don't care. I'm preaching right now. I'm not, I'm not trying to dance. If you have no conflict, then you have to wonder whether you have the spirit at all. If you don't have the spirit, you ain't saved. Okay? 
Those who believe, Ephesians 1.13, are sealed by the Spirit. So you can't be sealed and get unsealed. God is not an Indian giver. So if you have him, you have tension. If you don't have him, you don't have tension. Those are one of the ways that you know whether you're saved or not. One of the evidences of your salvation is tension provided to you by the Holy Spirit. So if you just live and left and you die, I don't care, I'm just, you know, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'll die. Oh, okay. And then you say, well, Jonathan, but there's a whole lot of people who are blessed who don't have that tension. Ah, you thought God was the only one who blesses. In Matthew chapter 4, didn't Satan try to bless Jesus? Well, if you just, you know what I'm saying, this rock, turn this rock into bread, or just, you know what I'm saying, bow down to me, Jesus, and I'll give you the kingdoms of this world. See, you're thinking about all the people that got money and fame and all that kind of stuff, and they don't care about Jesus. And Satan is like, I know, because I'm blessing their socks off. I don't want them to think about Jesus. I will bless them to the end of their life until they're with me. You've got to decide which blessing you want. But tension is a part of your salvific experience. That's just the word of salvation, salvific. Take that to your parents. They're going to be like, oh, you learned something. He says, Abraham, I need you to, I know you dropped anchor. I know you're settled. I know you settled in how you operate and you, 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 you cool in the world and all that kind of stuff. Forget all that. My blessings ain't over there. They're over here. Make your decision. There, there was a, something that I saw on social media about a way they used to trap um, monkeys, apes. They used to trap apes and they would put a fruit in a box. And the ape would reach his hand in there and grab the fruit. But the hole that his hand went through was too small for the hand and the fruit to come out. So he'd stick his hand in there and grab the fruit, and he'd turn it and be stuck. And all of the trappers would just walk up and kill him. And he would see the trappers, but he wanted the fruit. So he's yelling, you know that, I don't know how to do it. But, you know. He's yelling, but won't let go of the fruit. No, 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 don't kill me, don't kill me. Don't. Drop the fruit, dummy. Oh, that's us. My desires and what I want. My thoughts, my will, my way. And the enemy's coming. Hold that desire a little bit longer. Don't let it go and go God's way. Because the enemy knows if he can get you to hold on to what you want long enough, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He will destroy you. You have to decide what you want. Many of us are trapped holding our own fruits. How did it start in the garden? Eve, put that down. Trapped holding fruit that she shouldn't have been holding. Abraham's, leave it. Go to a land which I will show. Go is the smallest word in that passage. How many letters is it? Oh, okay, this is high school. I'm just making sure everything. It's two. Small word. It's everything. The word go is everything, bro. It's everything. It's a small word. Biggest impact because the blessing is on the other side of the go. The blessing doesn't precede the go. The blessing is on the other side of the go. So if there is no feet that are moving, there is no blessing that's coming. Without the go, he says, go and I will show. Most of us want him to show so we can go. No, you cannot experience God and, and ask him to operate out of order with himself. This is his word. So if you want God to show, first you must, see, most of us are from Missouri. Y'all don't know what that is. See, it's the show me state. Y'all, okay, never mind, I'll move on from that. If you go, I'll show. If you don't go, I'm not going to show. Why? Because I'm obedient to myself and you're being disobedient to my word. And if you go before I show, that means you must trust me. I need you to come home. I need you to trust me. It's not going to be comfortable. 
You being comfortable is not evidence that God said something to you. Well, I'm uncomfortable with what they've said. God must not want me to do this because God wants me to be happy. If y'all don't let that go, None of these people in the Bible, Gideon wasn't comfortable with having to go to war with only 300 people. Sarah wasn't comfortable having to give birth to a child at almost 100 years old. Rahab probably wasn't comfortable hiding the spies knowing she could be killed. Noah wasn't comfortable taking 120 years to build an ark having, having never seen rain in his life. Everyone who's called to greatness in the Bible was never comfortable when they were called. They were just obedient. And God revealed through their obedience, through the go. If there is no go, there is no show. It's a word called faith. And the Bible says, without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. You cannot please God if you're not willing to go when your eyes simply don't see where you're going. Listen, I went to my dad um, if, if you're on your phone, get off. It's the word of God. Right after this is over, you can get on your phone. If God's talking, you stay off your phone. It's a disrespect to the word of God to where I can't listen for 30 minutes and then go get on my phone right after it's over. And it's a check for me, too. Sometimes I'll do that in church, and then I'll go, oh, yeah, yeah, addiction. God's talking, and I ain't him. He's this is his word. That's not something we should have the all high school. Not saying, well, get off your phone, get off your phone. We don't want to baby you. If you do it, we don't got to say it. He tells them to go, be obedient. I went to my dad when I was a... Uh, when I was 18, I said, Dad, how in the world you get from your point A to your point B? See, my dad was from the inner city of Baltimore, Maryland, where the word statistic derived its meaning. Trust me, it, it was rough over there. Dad from the hood. Tony Evans from the hood. I know you see him now. He's from the hood. No money. Ate fish every night for dinner. Herring. I don't know if you know what herring is, but they got millions of bones in it, and you got to pick through all of the bones to get to the meat. I mean, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So if y'all ever get your parents to take Tony Evans out for lunch or dinner, don't offer him fish. He ain't eating it. He's done with that. No money in the house. Sometimes the heat worked. Sometimes it didn't. It's Baltimore's cold. They just live like that. Every house on the block when we visit was a trap house. So I would stay inside. And to daddy, my dad's dad would put his arm around me and say, hey, you better not ever see you out there with these drug dealers. You hear me? And I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he would have his belt in his hand. I said, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm in the house with you. What you? We used to get spanked by everybody. It was the village. Remember the village concept, young adults? We, everybody was spanking you at school, too. Y'all, you know, we get spanked in school. Y'all didn't know that? The teacher had a yardstick in school. So if you act up in school, they stand you up in front of the whole class. It brings back ideas. Maybe we need to implement some. In our next level youth ministry, give me that yardstick. But he's from... He's from that's where he's from. He's from the hood. So I said, Dad, how you, you raised by high school dropouts. Ain't nobody ever go to college, high school. You raised in the hood. You ain't got no money. How you, I don't understand how you made this happen. He said, uh, son, you really want to know? I said, yeah, I'm 18 and I'm talking to you. Aren't you impressed? Tell me how you made it from your point A to your point B. He said, go read Hebrews chapter 11 and tell me what you see. I said, what is this, a spiritual Easter egg hunt? You're sitting right here. You can't just tell me. How you made it from your point A to your point B? They go read Hebrews chapter 11. I went over there. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. By faith, verse 4, Abel offered a better sacrifice than Cain. Verse 5, Enoch was caught up by faith. Verse 7, Noah built an ark by faith. Verse 8, Abraham obeyed even though he had no idea where he was going. Verse 11, Sarah conceived even though she was barren. Verse 22, Isaac blessed Jacob. Verse 24, Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Verse 31, by faith, Rahab hid the spies. The whole chapter is about the Old Testament saints who have now been brought up in the New Testament because they did one thing, go. I will make your name great. 
See, most of us are chasing greatness the wrong way. You're trying to self-manufacture it. You can't. My, fir- my favorite person growing up was Michael Jackson. Okay, y'all. He- I know y'all know, but y'all, don't, y'all weren't there. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you don't. It was the 80s. You were there in the 80s. You weren't there. I mean, when that dude hit that spin and that. I can't do it. I can't do it. I was in my house. I said, ooh. I got up like it. Change music forever. Change the game forever. Dancing, singing, I mean, beast mode. So Michael Jackson was so famous. Listen to me. Michael Jackson was so famous. Since he was a kid, he had never seen the front of a lobby of a hotel. Worldwide, he used to have to go through the back door. He would never got to really be a kid, which is why he acted like a kid. I mean, he just was so, the whole globe, he set the whole globe on fire. You hear me? The whole globe, even though you weren't here, you know who he is. The whole, generations will know who he is. The whole, whole globe on fire. Um, he died about 12, 13 years ago, something like that. I don't really think about him. It doesn't really ever cross my mind. I'm busy. I got five kids, five. I got a lot going on. My brain doesn't do anything different because of Michael Jackson, nor does he cross my mind at any time during my life. Every now and then when his anniversary comes, I'm like, oh, yeah, hee <laughs> hee. I mean, other than that, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't occur to me, Michael Jackson, anything during my life. Why? Because he's not here. So because he's not here, it's just, well, who's the next good artist? Next! Y'all know, some of y'all know I'm the chaplain of the Cowboys. I told Dez while he's playing, I said, who was number 88 before you? He said, Michael Irvin. I said, was he good? He was like, Jay, come on, man. Yes, he's good. He's Hall of Fame. I said, man, so you mean they just unstitched his name off the back of that jersey and stitched your name on the back? He was like, bro, I don't like where this conversation is going. (laughs) I know, because Dez, one day, they're going to look at you and say, appreciate you. Next. That's the greatness you want? I remember going up to the plane. We about to go fly to play the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm going up to the plane. I get up there. Every man crying. Huge dudes, 300 pounds crying. I'm like, what are they crying about? Everybody hugging each other, crying and going on. And then Jason Garrett was getting off the plane, and he, drug my, he took my arm, and he drug me back down to the tarmac. And I said, you going to cut the chaplain? I didn't know what was going on. But... He said, no, Jay, we had a player die at 3 a.m. We were on the plane at 10 a.m. Somebody got in a car accident, passed away at 3 a.m. One of the players, one of the linebackers, leaving the club. I said, ah. So I got on the plane, and I made everybody take a knee from Jerry Jones all the way to the back. And I said a prayer, because when mortality shows up, every, you can't, mortality kicks in, all you can do is look up. All of a sudden, God's important. So everybody prayed. Then I went to chapel service and I said, what am I going to do at chapel service? I don't know what to do. Like, this ain't got nothing to do with what they just went through. What what am I supposed to do? And God was like, when a seed falls, something should come alive. Just preach the gospel. So players who never come to chapel came to chapel. Ten players accepted Jesus Christ. That was the good thing of it. Then we go to the game. So these dudes get on the line. They sing the national anthem. And then they say, let's give a moment of silence to Jerry Brown, Jr., All right. Dun, 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 dun. <sighs> All right, it's over. DeMarcus Ware was standing there, tears coming down his eyes. We came here to see a football game. I said, D. Ware, man, I'm sorry, bro, um, but I want you to know that all man can do is give you a moment of silence. You're going to be in the Hall of Fame. All the things that you've done in your 14, 15 year career. But when you're gone, we're going to give you 20 seconds. I said, Mo, Mo Claiborne, got six interceptions, about to go to the 
Pro Bowl, I said, hey, man, you had a good season, but just know when you're gone, people ain't going to give you nothing. We're going to give you 20 seconds of silence, and we're going to ha, ha, let the show continue. I said, or you can go and live your life, play your game for the Lord who's holding your eternity in his hands. It's simple logic. So who are you trying to be great for? How many people are you trying to get to follow you? How many? Oh, he gone. Next. Who's up? Abraham's. I will make you a great nation. I will make you great. I will make your name great. I will block for you. I will bless you. You want to know the greatness of Abraham? Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one. I like you don't know it. So are you. Let's just praise the Lord. Arms down. I'm grown. I don't do that part. I know. I'm. I'm you mean to tell me we're still singing about Abraham after five thousand years? Because that's greatness. That's God's greatness. That's true legacy. That's your opportunity. But it depends on the way that you walk. Who do you believe, culture or Christ? That's a hard one. It's not. Abraham, go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you. And when I show you, when you go, I will give you a great nation. I'll give you a great name. Don't worry about it. I got it. I'll bless those who bless you, curse those who curse you, and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. I'll close with this. How did Abraham bless all the families of the earth? Anybody know? Genesis 12, he said, I'm going to, you're going to bless all the families of the earth. Anybody know? Mass, yeah. Who? Okay, the 12 sons that came from Jacob, his grandson. Okay, we're on our way. Who are you? I love it. Jesus came through the lineage of Abraham. Abraham, go. I need you to go. Abraham, when you go, I'm going to bless you. You're going to have a son named Isaac. Isaac is going to have a son named Jacob. Jacob is going to have 12 sons. That became the nation of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. And from the nation of Israel, just wait for it, is going to come an Israelite king named Jesus. And Jesus died for the Jews and, and the Gentiles. You, my friends, are a Gentile. No salvation would come to you if it wasn't for the movement of Abraham thousands of years prior to Jesus. You think this is about you, don't you? Or could it be about your sons and daughters, their sons and daughters who are carrying your attitude, action, character, and conduct, which you carry Jesus's attitude, action, character, and conduct, and now it's proliferating through the earth before God comes back and judges it. It's... A little bit bigger than you. Just thought I'd make that statement. If you're not connected to Jesus Christ, then you're not in the family of Abraham. Father Abraham had many sons. That song means that you believe in Jesus and therefore have been adopted into the family of Abraham. It's a covenant with Abraham. So hopefully one day, People will be able to talk about you and the fact that their life is different because you were here. And then when God sees you, he can say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. Now I'm going to make you ruler over many. Don't worry about the 20 seconds they gave you. Here's your eternity. So let's pray. I want to pray for you. We've got, how are they doing next door? 
Still talking? Still preaching? Okay. Um, let me just pray for you. If there's anybody in here who's saying, ah, I'm not walking the way I need to walk and I want to change that, you can stand up. I'm going to pray for you intentionally. Um, stand up. Yeah, like if, you, if you're like, ah, I hear this and I need to go. I want to pray for you specifically and intentionally. Yeah, don't worry about, you know, people. Worry about your relationship with God. Like, I want what God has for me, yo, and I'm not, I don't want to just keep putting that to the side. He can call me at 15. And it's important for you to know it's better to be uncomfortable and called and, instead of comfortable and not called. Heavenly Father, I lift up those who are standing in the room who are saying, I need to take another step. I need to go further. May they work not based on rules, may they work based on relationship. May they work not for victory, may they work from victory. They've already been given the Spirit of God. So we pray, Lord, that they would start walking based on the uniform that they have on. Who can say that they play for one team and run, and run the plays from the other team? Help us to run the plays of the team we're on. If there's anyone in here, Lord, who's not saved, Lord, I pray that today would be the day. And so if you have not given your life to Christ in this room, I'm going to pray a prayer right now. Um, if you're not sure that the spirit resides in you, there's no tension. You just are living your life. I'm going to pray this prayer. The words don't save you. Your faith, your trust, your belief in Jesus Christ is what saves you. I'm just going to use these words to lead you. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. And I'm in need of a savior. I'm calling on you to be that savior right now. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And rose from the dead for me. Save me right now, Jesus. I give my life to you. Now help me to follow you the way you followed your father. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. Appreciate y'all for having me. Um, if you were standing, I want you to go to that altar call, and I need some ladies and men, I need some kingdom servants over there available to pray Take down some information and encourage our students. If you were standing up, I want you to stand back up. I want you to go to the altar call room because we want to dig into what you are going through. We're standing up. And I get was specific. This. Come on. I'll go over there. If you were Real standing quick. up. I want you to head over there to our altar call room, even if you didn't stand up, but you still need something. This is your moment. Now, what do we have here? Okay, so we had the food drive today. I'm going to try to do this quietly. Uh, let me see who's our winner. Yeah, so we have... Um, so we're, this is Homecoming Kings and Queens. Uh, who brought canned goods? Canned goods? Okay, some of y'all brought canned goods. We're going to give those away. Um, to our community, and we're excited to be able to do that. And so we have one male and one female who took it home. All right, so y'all give it up for Hannah Stanton. <laughs> Come up here, Hannah. Come up here. How many did she bring? That's not a, is this, is this a typo? No, this is not a typo. Hannah brought 228 cans. Sheesh. Oh, we need to get a picture of this too. Miss Natalie, can you come take a picture? Okay, we gotta get this. Is that hey, the one? Is, is, is that the one? Queen. It's for the boy. Okay, hold on, hold on. Boy, just, okay. All right, let me get this out the way. Okay, you gotta put this on there. Yeah, you gotta put this on there. We gotta get this picture. It's homecoming queen right here. <laughs> yeah, Hannah. 
And we're going to present okay. her. All right. It's a gift card to Jersey Mike's. So we just nice. we got a gift card for Jersey Mike's. Stay up there. Stay up there. All right. And for our king, Prince Anthony. Where you at, Prince? Where you at, Prince? Hey, y'all give it up for Prince. How many he bring? 77. Ooh, nice. <laughs> All right, you're clean. I want to go up. The king and queen. These things thing heavy too. I don't know how to put this on here. Let me see. Let me just, let me put it with his hat, hat on. Off, put it with a hat on. I don't know if he's trying to cover something up. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to respect. I'm trying to respect him. Good. I don't know. No, you don't know. That's good awareness. Take your hat off, please. Oh, you good? It's all good, man. Okay, let's take a picture. <laughs> And then let me give him Jersey Mike's gift card. Hey, y'all give them a standing ovation. Give up, give they they up, give it to the ovation. community. It's our homecoming king, kings and queens. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. You guys are dismissed. Good job. Good job. Thank you, Thank you all. Y'all can take that. It's yours. Get some good lunch. Now, where is uh, Dr. Tony Evans? Do we have time for discussion? He's still over there preaching. q and Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. Okay, so we got a little bit of time. Y'all want to do a Q&A? A Q&A. Q&A. A question and answer. All right, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Uh, you have a question? Somebody got a question? Q&A? Question about the message, about anything that we've discussed, about trust, faith, you need some advice about what to do, have them answer these questions. Okay. We need one. Okay, we're going to do a little bit different. So here's the question, and anybody can answer. We're going to bring you a mic, so just raise your hand. Here's the question. How would you describe obedience? Explain it in your own words. How would you describe obedience? Explain in your own words. Anybody want to give it a shot? There we go. Thank you. Compliance with an order. Compliance with an order. Okay. Compliance. Anybody else want to give it a shot? I want up her. To expand on that definition, compliance with an order without question. Hmm, without question. In the sense of challenging authority, right. Okay. Anybody else? Let me get one generate. Let me get one generate. Uh, let me say this. Compliance with what kind of order? You can comply with a false order. Is that obedience? Yeah, so obedience to the obedience to the false is automatically disobedience to the truth. All right. <laughs> Still preaching. All right, let's get a representative from Generate to explain in your own words obedience. Are you good? No, come on. <laughs> Go ahead. Sis. It's just adding on to that, but it's obedience whether you like it or not. Because a lot of times we're not going to like what the Lord says. And we're going to want to have conversations about it. And right. regardless, we're just supposed to do what he says. So Good. Period. One of the things he talks about in Deuteronomy is he tell them, Obey because it's for your own good. You know, God doesn't, you didn't add anything to God for you to obey. It's for you. <laughs> it's for your own good. God's going to still be God. He's still going to be on his throne. He good. It's for your benefit and your good. Your best benefit is to obey God. You can test it too. See what happens. Okay. Question two. 
How do you know if what you're hearing is God's voice and not your own? Ooh, you want to talk about it, Gabby? You want to, you want to talk about it, Kelly? Come on, come on, take it. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, come on, come on, come on. Okay. Yeah. Um, so basically, what Pastor Jonathan said was, um, our voice tells us what we want to hear, basically, and God's voice tells us something out of the ordinary, something that we usually wouldn't think. Hmm. <laughs> okay, we got a mic, mic over here. How do you know if what you're hearing is God's voice and not your own? I have a question to expand on that. That's okay. basically, what if what you think is in agreement? Like, what if, what if after like, you spend some time with him and like, mm -hmm. you start to think, not think how he thinks, but like he impacts what you think, then how do you differentiate? Then you're in alignment. But how do you know? As, as long as it's consistent with God's word. If, if, you're, if you're consistent, the thing about the Bible is it doesn't give us every detailed answer for every single step, but it gives us general principles that you can apply to whatever area of life. OK, so as long as it's consistent with the word of God, then you don't have to question it. You pray about it and you say, God, I believe that this is what your word says. And then you go. I think God will still bless that. OK. Mm -hmm. You'll also know by your peace, um, and God will also give you confirmation. He'll show you yeah. that you were right, that he was right. Yeah, right? that's good. Good. All right, anybody else? Um, how do you know if what you're hearing is God's voice and not your own? Okay, we got another one up here. <laughs> Come on, Miss Natalie. Let me get a generate after this to, to help answer this question. Pastor Jonathan said that when it's like something that shakes within you, like I would say a godly catalyst for change. So like something that you know that you have not heard before, like Kelly said, something that is like a breakthrough and like something that you know that you can expand on and like God will help you to expand on. Good, 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 good. Anybody from Generate want to help answer that? Provide some uh, age experience for the young people. Here we go. And it's just a reiteration, but basically, if your shh, flesh shh, shh, shh. is pleased by what you just heard, that's probably not God. If you are, if it's if it's a torment and it's a pull, and you're hearing the voice of God, it's, it's a, it should be a oil and water. The, the the flesh and the spirit won't mix. So. If your your flesh is being pleased, that's not the voice of God. Good, good. So he talked. There was a, a word he used. It started with the letter T. What was that word? Tension. There's tension. All right. There's tension. So, um, anybody else want to answer that question? Give it a stab. How do you know if what you're hearing is God's voice and not your own? Let me get one more. Let me let me get a I, I want a young man specifically. Young man. I need a young boy to answer this question. Come on. Come on. Come on, young man. Right here. We'll go to you too. It sounds foreign, like when you feel the tension, mm -hmm. it don't sound natural. It's like, mm -hmm. it makes you feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It's all right. It's good, good, yeah. It's good. You feel, like, you feel a little uncomfortable. It's not normal. It's not the way culture would recommend you doing it. You know, it, it's, it's different. It's different. Kaden up here had an answer. Appreciate you, man. Let's go, Kaden. <laughs> Student leader. Come on, man. Yeah, so pretty much, like, it's kind of like what he was saying. Mm -hmm. How, like, if it's a decision, if it's a decision that uh, that you're more comfortable with, then it's not from. It's like it's like you rather than it being from God. Pretty much. Good, good. So what I'm hearing is discomfort. There's some discomfort. Good, yeah. good. 
That it? Oh, and also, like, and okay. also, if in conflict, shh, 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 shh. if, like, if your mind is in conflict with you, too, as well, you mm-hmm. know, because sometimes your mind can be saying one thing while, uh, while God is actually trying to see, uh, talk to you mm-hmm. in your mind, so. Question number three. Has there been a time in your life when you had to let go of a place that was comfortable? How did that make you feel? Come on, Jacob. Y'all be quiet. Pastor's about to speak. (laughs) So I would say last year when I went to public school for the first time, I had been at this school basically my entire life. So I felt like I just said one day, just what my dad was telling me, like, do you you want to go to school with your uncle and learn from him, do stuff like that? And I just said, yes. And I just had that trust. But being in public school, it's just a, a complete 360 from what I was taught here. And I believe that with my background, that really helped me. And it's helped me go through public school and... If anybody else is struggling or has those moments, it's always about the foundation. And I thank my parents and the Lord for that and my school. And it's really helped me. So, yeah. Good. good. Thanks for sharing that, man. Uh, Desiree had one over here. Desiree. Desiree, y'all give it up. She's a graduate and she's in the building. Desiree. Desiree. Hey, do we have any other post grad? Anybody graduated this past year? Uh, pretty much graduated. Just anybody? Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Come on, Desiree. Okay, um, I'm going to use an example of whenever I had to, like, kind of distance myself from the friend group that I was in. Um, mm-hmm. I had some friends, you know, we was cool, kicking it, but they wasn't, they weren't for me, you know what I'm saying? Like, they weren't, at the end of the day, they wouldn't come down, you know what I'm saying? So, um... I had a talk with my grandma, and she was like, you just need to stop hanging out with them. And I was like, what? Like, no. And you know what I'm saying? Like, she was like, I'm not going to let you go to their house. Like, what? No. But it was like, after I removed myself from them, it was like I kind of felt out of place. Like, I didn't know. Like, I was lonely. You know what I'm saying? Because I hung out with them every day. You know what I'm saying? Like, they were my friends. Why are you laughing? <laughs> oh, that was in the mic. Oops. But, um, yeah, I just didn't know where to go or what to do because I wasn't a part of nothing, I guess. Good, good. Y'all give it up for her. Be comfortable with being uncomfortable. I'm sorry, but I got to wrap up, okay? So I'm going to close us out in prayer. Father, we thank you for the message that was preached. We pray that you would replenish Jonathan. Pastor Jonathan, as he has poured out, may you pour into him. We thank you for Miss Shan, am I saying it right? For leading us in worship. May your favor be upon her as she leaves here. We thank you so much for this time that we have shared together with one another. We pray for every student that you would give them the strength to go. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes there's a a lot of voices in their head, the voice of the culture, even sometimes the voice of parents and the voice of friends. It's so many voices. But God, I pray that they would focus on your voice. That even you would speak through their friends, that you would speak through their parents, that you would speak through even their teachers, even strangers, as you have done many times with me. That you speak to their heart, God so that they may go and claim and, and, and the promises that you have promised them. May your favor rest upon every child in this room. May you protect them. May you bless them. May you keep them in perfect peace as their mind is stayed on you. Thank you, Jesus, for everyone. May they be blessed going in, blessed going out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, hello, and thank you for tuning in to our Next Level Youth online services. My name is Isaac Shepard. You can find more youth content on our Facebook and Instagram at Next Level Youth W3. 
Also, don't forget to tune in to Dr. Tony Evans every Sunday at 11 a.m. on our OCBF Church, Facebook, and YouTube. Thank you, and God bless you.